To some, it can mean a car crash or a collision of some sort. To others, it can mean making a difference. To me, the word impact is not merely a word. It's a phrase, a mantra, a way of life. To me, the acronym IMPACT stands for I must personally advance Christ today. Impact is the way that I guide my life, and it's the way I show others around me that our purpose here on earth is to do the Lord's will and to be ready whenever He calls us, no matter what. In fall of 2005, my family and I began attending services at Lewis Hall Church of Christ. We had heard many good things about the church itself and especially about the youth ministry program there. And we soon found out why. The youth and family minister, a man named Tony Hall, was the driving force behind the youth ministry program. He was a man zealous for God and excited to do God's work. He so strove to serve God with a loyal heart and with a willing mind, as Solomon is told to do in 1 Chronicles 28.9. He was always there to do what needed to be done, be it the small details, like driving someone home after a youth event, or the big tasks, like organizing our summer camp for area churches every year. He was an inspiration to everyone in our youth group and everyone around him, and he promoted a strong sense of community within our youth group. The ultimate goal of the family ministry program at the Church of Christ was making an impact for Christ. Tony used the phrase impact everywhere, no matter what he was doing. He incorporated it into a lesson of some sort. He was a living, breathing example that our youth group could relate to. And he didn't just talk about making an impact. He acted on it. He was involved in every aspect of the outreach program. And he could always be heard encouraging someone in their daily walk with God or singing loud enough to make everyone smile. He worked for the good of society and led many others to do so as well. Isaiah 6, 8 reads, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? For Tony, the answer was always, without question, here am I, send me. However, shortly after joining the youth program at Louisville, I found out what most other people already knew. Tony suffered from a malignant tumor on his brain, and he had not been given very long to live. Needless to say, I was devastated. He was such a charismatic leader and so focused on God, nobody knew what would go what would happen without him. But we still held on to hope. He seemed to have some good days in the course of his illness, and even though they were rare, on those days he seemed almost back to normal, up to his eyeballs working for the Lord. Like Paul, Tony faced many trials in the later part of his life. He was not physically thrown in jail and tortured, but his illness prohibited him from working for the Lord in multitudes of ways he desired to. Colossians 1.29 in Colossians 1.29, Paul writes, To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Tony always tried to let the will of the Lord shine in his life. And the verse that most represented Tony was 1 Corinthians 11.1. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Because that was Tony's ultimate goal. And the goal, the goal that we should all strive for was to be like Christ. He never let his illness get better. Even when you could tell that he felt completely horrible, he still had a smile on his face. And if you asked him how he was doing, he was his answer was always the same. It's a wonderful day to be alive. I feel great. How are you? It encouraged all the teams in our youth group to see him as such a positive shine of light. And even though he wasn't as involved as he normally been, he was still he wasn't able to coordinate camp for our summer like he had usually done. But he still managed to come up and spend the evening with us once, which was a very strong example for me because the day he visited was the day I had decided to be baptized. His dedication and excitement at my decision, even when he had hundreds of other things to be worried about, strengthened my resolve and helped me to begin my walk with God with much zeal. Eventually, however, even the person all of us thought was the strongest force come to be the hardest trial an individual can face. When Tony passed away last fall, it was excruciatingly hard for everyone surrounding him. But at the same time, he left, the, he left one of the best examples of the here am I that I could ever imagine. His dedication and wholeheartedness taught me that I must be willing to make an impact and to serve God whenever he calls.